everybody welcome back to my channel what's good what's going on hope you're doing well so one character i find really interesting in pretty little liars is actually melissa and i ultimately think melissa is the show's ultimate red herring so i thought we could talk about her today and kind of discuss her character and kind of like what was the point of melissa because it felt like at the start of the show they were taking this route with melissa that i really liked and then i feel like her character just really fell flat and i feel like they could have done a bit more with melissa and i have a friend who um i've watched the show with when we were like 12 like years ago and i was talking to him about it and he kind of has the same because his theory was that melissa was ad and i never really understood that theory but then he started telling me why and i was like hold on because like you're, you're kind of onto something here and then it kind of made me delve into melissa a bit more and i really feel like they could have done a bit more with melissa i feel like melissa's character ended up being quite underwhelming and i feel like they were setting her up to maybe not be a but the writing around her was so good for her too i know obviously she was involved in bethany's death but the ultimate mystery around her and kind of what she brought to the show was really really good for the show honestly but then it just kind of like fell flat and i feel like they didn't really do anything with melissa when i feel like they could have done more with melissa if that makes sense so i'm going to talk through her timeline on the show and kind of like the most important parts of her time in the show and then kind of discussing where i feel like it kind of fell flat yeah and kind of like her being the ultimate red herring obviously i know that every character in pretty little liars could not be involved in everything and there has to be some red herrings in there but i feel like things were so pro melissa being involved in much more than just the bethany situation and we'll talk through it but i just feel like it fell flat and i feel like it could have been so much better because i really enjoyed some of the writing towards melissa's character in terms of like the suspicion and the mystery surrounding her and i feel like it just fell at the last hurdle so melissa makes her first introduction into the show in the pilot episode and straight off the bat we kind of get given i think melissa's ultimate purpose on the show but we see her when spencer has told him that she's been renovating the barn but melissa is like oh the parents said that i can have the barn and spencer is really annoyed at that because her parents said that she would be able to have the barn there's tension straight away between the girls because uh, melissa has a new boyfriend called ren and spencer and ren have a little like kiss and melissa spots them kissing and has to break up with ren and ren get kicks gets kicked out of the hastings household so i think straight away melissa's um the point of her character is kind of shown straight off the bat i think the ultimate point of melissa's character was to introduce or kind of build into spencer's character and introduce us into who spencer is as a person as a sister but also introduce the hastings family i feel like melissa perfectly sums up everything that the hastings family is competitive quite bitter quite selfish and everything has to go her way and everything's a competition and i feel like melissa is kind of the perfect like she is the hastings family kind of summed up into one thing so i feel like her purpose on the show straight off the bat was to to do this and to kind of give us a better insight into the hastings family and specifically spencer because her and spencer have a sibling rivalry for a long period in the show to be honest and it's kind of throughout the entire show in the episode title there's no place like homecoming spencer actually steals melissa's like history essay and it ends up winning an award and when melissa reads the essay that's when she clocks that spencer stole it from her and this again is enhancing the sibling rivalry between the two and i kind of like how spencer is shown as not to be perfect in this little rivalry as well because to be honest i think there were points in the show i found melissa quite whiny and quite annoying but i feel like she has so much validation in how she feels towards spencer because of everything that spencer does to her but obviously because we have to root for the main characters i feel like we can never 
take a moment and be like hold on i feel like some of melissa's actions or kind of the things that she says but also her feelings towards spencer are very much justified because she stole rent off her and then stole her history paper and then she finds out later on that um spencer had a relationship kind of thing with ian as well so i feel like although spencer we need to add context to these situations and these men are a lot older than spencer i still feel like some of melissa's feelings towards spencer are still quite justified because i would be angry as well i feel like everyone would be angry but i feel like this essay thing was another good kind of delve into kind of the point of melissa on the show to be honest to really involve that sibling rivalry that they had going on around this time spencer starts dating someone called alex melissa is asked to chaperone at spencer's prom so when they get to the prom melissa goes to alex and kind of says that spencer is only with him to anger their father because alex works at like a tennis court where like the hastings family go and oh my god sorry there's building work outside my house and it's so loud peter didn't really want alex and her being a thing and then melissa kind of mocks his kind of like financial situation because they're kind of like different classes to be honest so alex ends up kind of walking out and spencer feels like melissa had some involvement in that so then it's revealed through flashbacks that ian and spencer kind of had a little thing here and there and at this point ian and melissa have actually got back together and they actually reveal that they have eloped and they go on a honeymoon and this causes tension kind of without melissa knowing melissa doesn't know about this kind of like relationship at this point in the show there's tension there because we know that spencer has done something to melissa i don't know i feel like she's justified melissa in kind of feeling bitterness towards spencer i don't know so they come back from their honeymoon and melissa announces that they're trying for a baby ian gets quite annoyed at melissa for telling spencer but melissa was like oh spencer can keep a secret and ian's like oh i know because um of the whole kiss situation that happened so straight away we have this kind of like a love triangle between the siblings and I feel like it's really enhancing why Melissa is in the story and like the point of Melissa, to be honest. Because I obviously know, like, we'll get into it later on, but obviously, um, melissa did kill bethany but i feel like her point of existing in the show could have been so much more than just like that and i feel like they were building it up to be more than that and all of the suspicion that she carried through the show which we'll get to so i don't know it was quite underwhelming anyway so during later episodes melissa reveals that she is pregnant and spencer kind of has a bad reaction to this because at this point spencer thinks that ian killed allison and keeps telling melissa like he's guilty and he needs to own up to his guilt but melissa's not really having it and she's like just literally leave us alone like you've already ruined my relationship with ren i'm not gonna let you ruin this relationship as well and that's when they kind of argue about spencer says that everything that melissa does she doesn't really take spencer into account and how it might affect spencer and things like that which like not to be against spencer here but like i kind of disagree with this because i feel like melissa is an adult at this stage and she's living her own completely life in some situations absolutely she needs to think about spencer but also like i don't think about my siblings when i'm making life choices to, like it just i don't think i don't know i don't think it's that big of a thing as spencer's making it out but obviously in some circumstances absolutely but in this situation where melissa knows zero context as to what spencer's like saying i feel like there would be no justification like if i was melissa i would just be like this crazy woman <laughs> accusing my husband of murder with like no evidence or anything like that after she had already taken my boyfriend i don't know i feel like there's some justification here for melissa being like what the hell you know spencer eventually brings up as proof of ian's culpability due to the fact that ian stayed at the hilton resort the very same location ali was staying at just before she disappears however melissa clarifies to spencer that she stayed at the resort with ian when she was getting a secret abortion she further explains the abortion never took place as she miscarried melissa adds that losing a child made the follow-up pregnancy much more pivotal and spencer is flabbergasted at everything she's just like heard however we find out that ian and melissa actually stayed in separate rooms when they were at the hilton resort so this is when the suspicion around melissa really starts building up and i actually really like the writing towards melissa and the suspicion kind of 
writing the suspicion around melissa i think was actually really really good so then we have the episode for whom the bell tolls which is obviously the episode where ian dies so spencer and melissa are on the way to the church but they end up having a car crash on the way there so melissa goes to hospital because obviously she's pregnant needs to check on the baby but spencer goes to the church to try and find ian that's when ian kind of seems to confess to Alison's murder but not actually and they end up having a little like chase through the church and Ian ends up dying because Alison pushes him and like he dies but I don't actually know if he dies here because like he dies later on with like a bullet wound but, like I don't know because they didn't really confirm it at what point he actually died so take this into consideration but I feel like this is where things start to heat up as well because we go on to season two where Melissa's kind of spending this season dealing with the fallout of like Ian's death because obviously Ian's body was not in the church so she's really discrediting Spencer's story at this stage the parents are also taking Melissa's side and not believing Spencer's story because there is no body to confirm it. Now, this is another, like, the point of Melissa, I guess, on the show is the parents. The Hastings parents are very interesting people and they are also quite competitive and they want their children to be perfect. So a lot of the time on the show, Melissa and Spencer kind of compete with each other to win their parents' love. And once again, I think that's building into Spencer's character and is ultimately there for Spencer's character development on the show. Also builds into the suspicion aspect, which we'll get into because Peter Hastings keeps a lot of Melissa's secrets from Spencer, which causes a lot more tension on the show as well and um, which kind of leads her to be the ultimate kind of like red herring she softens towards spencer a bit in the early episodes of season two however she's spotted doing kind of really suspicious activities and this is where it really builds up regarding the suspicion spencer discovers someone claiming to be ian texting melissa and she suspects that her sister is secretly keeping him alive Spencer asks her sister to protect her over Ian, but Melissa disagrees. The liars later find out she had been secretly meeting with Ren after watching her take something from Ren in the Hastings parking lot. Spencer correctly guesses the merchandise to be paying killers for Ian. This again is kind of where the tension is brewing because Melissa is taking Ian's side in this situation rather than Spencer's side and everything kind of comes crashing down regarding this and this is when a lot of secrets start to really be the secrets in the Hastings family really starts to kind of be pivotal and really starts to be the focal point because everything kind of comes crashing down because soon enough they actually find out that Jason is um peter hastings son so this is really when the secrets kind of come crashing down and i i think melissa is really important in the secrets aspect because the hastings family is a very secretive family and the ultimate story kind of is overall around the hastings and like dita Rinta's family so i really do think the point of melissa as well was to kind of expand on the fact that this family is carrying a load of secrets and can't be trusted um so at this stage she's kind of being being used as a kind of support system for other things for kind of evolving the hastings family evolving spencer's character and kind of building that tension up between them melissa is seen looking around the house for ian's passport and claims it's for the insurance company However, Spencer scopes out the barn when Melissa is showering and finds a suitcase packed with items for Ian. The belongings consist of clothes, painkillers, and Ian's passport. Spencer enlists Ren to help prevent her sister from helping Ian flee the country. When Melissa goes to visit Ian at the barn with Ren, that is when they find Ian's dead body with a gunshot wound and a S word letter. Spencer then comes up with an idea to put a memorial on for Ian and the parents and Melissa are very grateful for Spencer for putting this idea forward. So they go to the memorial and Melissa really warms to Spencer. However, the phone that was used to text Melissa pretending to be Ian, Spencer actually had and Melissa sees that. So she goes really angry because she feels like Spencer has really kind of betrayed her and pretended to be Ian in that aspect, which she, she did for a, a bit. So I don't know. I feel like once again, Melissa's kind of in the right here because Spencer did do 
some texting. So I don't know. I feel like this is justified. During the episode titled Never Letting Go, she actually goes on a vacation. And for a while, we only hear of Melissa through her parents being like, oh yeah, Melissa's doing this over in wherever she is. And this is ultimately where I think it falls flat because a bit later on, spoiler, getting ahead of myself, Melissa goes to London with Ren and we only hear about Melissa after that kind of through the parents being like oh yeah she's in london right now that's where it falls flat because we don't really hear much of melissa after like so much has like been built up around her but anyway we continue during the flashback episode uh the first secret melissa and ian were in the initial stage of their romance she seems oblivious to allison's attempts at st stealing her boyfriend though she does kiss ian just as allison is trying to strike up a conversation with him at noel's halloween party when she leaves, Alison accuses Melissa of being insecure and tries to outshine Spencer in the eyes of their parents with her own success, which I think hits the nail on its head. That is the point of Melissa in this show, to build up Spencer's character, to provide the competition in the family, to present that sense of jealousy throughout the show as well. I think Alison truly hit the nail on the head there. Now, in the episode titled Through Many Dangers, Toils and Snares, Spencer tells Toby that her parents are with Melissa in Philadelphia because the baby has an irregular heartbeat and is being looked at. So once again, we're only hearing about Melissa through, oh yeah, she's over here doing this at the moment. Like, no, let's add... I understand that the actress might not have had the time and that's okay but you've got to then make use of the time when the actress is available so to kind of write her out of the show for plot convenience whenever they need her to just like makes her character ultimately fall flat and I don't know like Melissa is so interesting and it just continues to just fall flat throughout the show. In the episode titled Breaking the Code, Caleb has been kind of decoding the NAT Club videos. And in this video, we see the NAT Club meeting Jenna, no, 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 no. Jenna, Gara, Ian, not Jason. But we hear someone coming up the stairs. And at first, the video cuts off before the person comes in, so we can't really see. But Caleb has like been hacking it, you know, doing his usual i'm in business and he ends up getting the full video in which melissa storms into the room and everyone's like oh my goodness like melissa's like after allison because she says in the video where's allison and this holds so much suspicion and builds her character up because at this stage allison is like dead still and they're trying to find out who did it and them setting Melissa up like this, I think was really good writing, to be honest, because like, even when I watched it for the, for the first time, I was like, interesting. Like we're really involving Melissa in all the things. And when you really think about it, Melissa's like kind of involved in like all of the big stories, to be honest. She's involved in the night that Alison went missing. She's involved in the Bethany situation. She's involved in the NAT club. She's involved with Garrett. She's involved with Ian jenna spencer the hastings family literally like every major plot point she is literally involved in in the episode titled unmasked melissa arrives at the masquerade ball as the black swan now the black swan was someone that the writers were really hyping up <laughs> they wanted so much focus on the black swan because they kind of linked the black swan to being a so i feel like melissa showing up in this was such a big thing because the black swan really held some convenience and um outside of the show marlene king would always write that the black swan was so important and things like that but the black swan actually didn't really end up being important at all which is annoying because i actually really like the concept of the black swan and melissa dressing up as the black swan and things like that holding weight to future stories and things like that but they build up the black swan so much they give it so much hype they're like yeah this is so interesting like so important this changes the show but it doesn't in the kingdom of the blind veronica tells spencer that veron uh melissa oh my god how did i just like forget her name has been hiding the fact that she actually miscarried the baby um 
earlier than when she said she had miscarried the baby so we know she's able to lie about really big things like that during the episode titled misery loves company byron has a flashback during which melissa is seen talking to an unknown individual on the phone on her patio the night allison went missing she yells do i need to call 911 to get your attention and looks visibly upset and frustrated with the person on the other end of the phone i love it i love the suspicion that's building up around melissa involving her in flashbacks from the night that alice went missing is obviously showing her importance in the show i love it i really really like the writing surrounding her at this stage to be honest jason later tells emily that he saw um cc and melissa talking that night that alice went missing now we don't actually know if this is true or not because this is kind of one of the plot holes of the show where we don't know if this actually happened but i feel like if it did like that is such cool writing because we've now involved melissa in the night that allison went missing in two major flashbacks and i feel like that is such good writing like we're building her up to have at least done something that night and obviously we know it comes to bethany or whatever i really just love the writing surrounding melissa and everything that's building up around melissa's character i think it is so good so during the episode titled a dangerous game emily looks as, at a suspicious looking melissa entering jenna's house inside melissa and shauna seem to be arguing with jenna stating that they have the tapes melissa further informs her that those bitches will be at the lodge at nine she proceeds to hand Shauna a copy of the invitation to Spencer's lodge party that's going to take place in Thornhill. Then obviously the night of the lodge fire happens and it's implied that Melissa was behind the incident. However, um, it's stated that Shauna was actually accountable for lighting the fire due to holding a grudge against the liars for the role they played on Jenna's loss of her eyesight. I love her being involved in this. I love it. Because once we find out that Shauna is A, or not A, but like was A, but like not A, <laughs> the way Melissa is involved in that, and then with Jenna, I feel like us as an audience is left to kind of ask, does she know more about the A game than what we initially think? And at one point, I think she does actually join the A team. So I think it is so cool involving her in those plots and at this point for me at the start of the show melissa is used as kind of a side thing to build up spencer's character build up the hastings family like i've said however at this point to be honest melissa's taking the front of the show and she's becoming this really suspicious suspect and i know the girls go through multiple suspects literally every episode but at this point melissa really is suspect number one and i love this the writing about it because she's gone from kind of this side character to ultimately becoming like actually she knows so much more than what we're letting on to here in season four episode titled a is for alive mona reveals that shauna and jenna were scared of melissa now this i feel like holds so much weight because jenna and shauna to me were characters that don't get scared easily so the fact that they were scared of melissa i think holds so much importance and i really like having that label on melissa because i feel like we had seen angry parts to melissa before but never really got the deep dive into it however to say that these characters were scared of melissa i think is like actually really important for us to know about melissa because in this whole like suspect thing surrounding her for her to be this scary to characters who are quite powerful and quite strong and determined i think it's like this is like big like and then it gets revealed that melissa and wilden were the queen of hearts on the halloween train and the queen of hearts were the ones that strangled spencer i think it was and also locked Arya in like the box with garrett's body and like tried to push her off the train sorry excuse me sorry no let's take a minute let's take a minute sorry she was one of these important characters on the halloween train and it comes to like nothing 
are you kidding me the halloween train is one of my favorite episodes and to see melissa play a really important part in this i think is so big for her character and so big for the suspicion it's like it's like wilden really kind of came to nothing like with his queen of hearts and with melissa's queen of hearts it kind of comes to nothing as well because i think she got blackmailed into doing it but at the end of the day she tried to kill spencer and she tried to kill Arya that night as well and would have successfully killed Arya if it wasn't for the liars finding her so the fact that she will openly have the guts to do this and to lie about it is like sorry this character of melissa is so much bigger than what we think and to see her evolve from the side character to this ultimate kind of like becoming of a villain is so interesting surrounding melissa and then hannah finds like a casting mold of melissa's face similar to like allison's mask excuse me excuse me excuse me sorry things are fitting too well for melissa here like the writing towards her and how they're setting her up i feel like all of this just for her to have killed bethany by accident as well like the, i'm sorry the clues pointing towards melissa being involved in just much more than what she was like is so that and so in front of our faces and couldn't be more obvious if we wanted it to be and i'm just like wowed at how it really came to like nothing in the end so during the episode titled facetime aria and spencer plant melissa's face mold inside her suitcase and spy on her melissa finds a mask and a mask and looks worried she leaves the house abruptly and aria and spencer quickly follow her spencer proceeds to confront melissa and questions her about the events that took place at the halloween train melissa, melissa swears that it was wilden who tried to harm her and further discloses that Jenna and Shauna were afraid of Wilden and that she sent them to Thornhill to find out if they were meeting Allison, confirming that Melissa too suspects that Allison is alive. As Spencer continues to press the situation, Melissa explodes and tells her that she has been protecting Spencer since before it started, further indicating her to let it go. So the fact that Melissa has said that she's protected Melissa since before everything had started, obviously we know it was because of Bethany, whatever but the writing potential for her to be involved in so much more than that and maybe involved in like the a stuff hello like hello in the episode title gamma zeta die veronica states that melissa has started her internship in london and this is where everything falls flat guys because we only really hear about melissa for a period of time through oh she's in london right now like we're building her up so much we're adding so many things to her character so many things that she's like keeping secret from spencer oh she's in london though let's just not end the story here we have so much to conclude so much to work on here so melissa returns to rosewood in a is for answers um surprising veronica as the police order a warrant to the hastings house at the rosewood police department Holbrook questions Melissa, but she doesn't give much away. In the waiting area of the station, Melissa confesses to her father that she knows who's in Allison's grave. And now that it's public knowledge that Allison's alive, it won't be long until they find out who it is. Melissa reappears in a flashback at Hilton Head, confronting Ian about the inappropriate relationship with Allison, telling Ian he either dumped her or she caused off their relationship. This is when I was really, really interested in Melissa's character because they're sat in a police station and they are quite literally being like, I need to tell people about this secret. But Peter's like, no, because you will be arrested. <laughs> I find this so interesting. I actually do kind of like the idea, or not the idea, the fact that she was involved in Bethany's murder by accident. I do actually like that. Um, which is why I feel like there's more to... Mel like, we could have done more with Melissa. Because Melissa obviously had the intent to bury a whole human being and lie about it for a year and cover it up so she has the potential to do other really dark things like that which is like i feel like her potential was just so wasted as a red herring like they were so focused on making the audience be kind of shocked that melissa not really involved in like the a stuff to the point where it's like 
we've wasted her, I feel. So in season five, Melissa informs her father that she wants to tell Holbrook the truth. She adds that when Spencer finds out she'll have a reason to come home because Spencer's like away with the liars at the time. Peter tells Melissa that Veronica and Spencer cannot tell the truth and then walks away. So, oh my god, I love it. I love I love the writing surrounding this, the father and the daughter keeping a secret. Because we already know the Hastings family is very messed up, very controversial, should we say. So the fact that they're keeping secrets from Veronica as well, I find really interesting. Because they don't trust Veronica with it, and Veronica's the mum. Veronica would want to keep her safe and lie for her. But the fact that Veronica can't even know, I think is super important here and like i don't know so during whirly girly veronica mentions to spencer that melissa and peter are in philadelphia retrieving spencer's car which has been impounded veronica warns spencer not to expect any souvenirs from london because all melissa brought back was attitude and secrets exactly do we see the writing surrounding melissa keeping the secret Oh my goodness, I love it. I really love it. Throughout the episode titled Run Alley Run, Emily finds out from Paige that Melissa is working with Mona and Lucas to fight against Allison's return. I love it. The fact that like Mona and Lucas are setting up like a little A team kind of thing and Melissa's like joining in on it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I love it. I love it. Let's carry this on. Because what happened? So then throughout the episode titled No One Here Can Love or Understand Me, Melissa leaves a video confession to Spencer, during which she explains having witnessed a fight between her sister and Allison the night she went missing. Melissa had caught a glimpse of Spencer walking back into their barn holding a shovel in her hands. Minutes later, she stumbled upon Bethany's, Bethany Young's unconscious body and thought the girl was Allison. Since they had worn the same clothes that night, Melissa wasn't able to get a good look of her face. Which is like interesting because why were you not able to look at the face? I feel like you would want to do that no and pushed bethany into an already open grave in an attempt to protect spencer she proceeded to cover up uh bethany's body with dirt not knowing that she was actually still alive melissa states that maybe their dad was right in asking her to be quiet but she couldn't have left spencer in the dark melissa finally professes her love for spencer before the recording comes to an end melissa then goes to london and spencer stays with her for a bit but they kind of make up here and there and ish but melissa does kind of stay in london so this is kind of what it all like concludes to like all the writing concludes to her being involved in the bethany situation which makes sense but i feel like like after this when i tell you like i don't think melissa comes back until after the time jump i think let me check yep after the time jump so i feel like it just kind of got wasted and that's kind of my point here because melissa was ultimately the red herring of the entire show which obviously like red herrings have to exist not everyone can be guilty in pretty little lies i understand that however i feel like melissa's potential was so good just for it to be bethany's murder and i know i'm like oh she only murdered someone but like just i feel like she should have been more involved in the big bits because like i said earlier she's involved in all the big stories and things like that in some type of way so for her to be like oh yeah i killed bethany and like for her to like not return for so long was kind of like well her character's kind of come to nothing because like yeah she's involved in the big murder i totally understand that but like there's not really any fallout there's not really her taking responsibility there's not really any kind of like anything past that do you know what i mean i feel like we've wasted melissa's character and the potential that she could have been because she doesn't return then until after cc's murder she returns in the episode titled the gloves are on and makes remarks on how spencer has developed feelings for caleb now i love 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 again the suspicion builds up again after cc's murder because at the end of the episode titled where somebody waits for me spencer discovers that melissa's broken suitcase handle matches the, the description of the alleged murder weapon throughout the episode title we've all got baggage hannah further fuels the possibility that melissa could have killed charlotte by telling spencer and caleb how she ran into her, her at a fashion show in london years prior to the murder she explains that melissa spent the entire evening drinking and at one point was sobbing in the bathroom in order to get over the fact that Charlotte dialed Wren to inform him 
that his partner had buried Bethany young. So that's her motive for potentially wanting to kill Cece. And I like, they're trying to go somewhere with Melissa. Like they are trying to do something with her. And I feel like that's why it's disappointing when her character kind of goes nowhere. I would have loved for Melissa to have been the one to have killed Cece. I would have loved it. And I feel like her character would have held so much more weight in the show then. And just would have been so much more than what she was. Because everything was written for her to be suspicious. and be, To be the suspicious character. Before the murder and after the murder. So they were definitely trying to do something there. They knew that Melissa had the potential. During the side effects of the alcohol. Melissa proceeded to grab Hannah's phone and dial Welby to have a word with Cece by pretending to be Allison. Hannah got into a physical fight with Melissa and eventually threw the phone at a mirror to prevent hearing Charlotte's voice from the other end. A few days later, Emily visits the two crows diner and discovers the missing part from Melissa's suitcase, but is nearly run over by a car that steals the weapon. Sorry, no, I'm not having this. I'm not having this. Do you see how perfectly set up this is? for melissa to be involved somehow somewhere someplace i would have loved for it to be the murder i really think it makes sense because for me the cc murder anyway was very underwhelming it being mona mona no offense i love you to bits me and you go way back we're like this you know but i feel like it was so disappointing because it was kind of like oh yeah well Mona could do that do you know what I mean but like Melissa to have been the murderer I think would have been so interesting and I would have been so there for it I kind of like her evil side I kind of like it in the episode titled burn this Melissa goes back to London and this like is really suspicious for Spencer because Veronica is up for an election so Spencer's like why would she leave before the elections like done but like peter hastings is like shut up and stop worrying and help your mum with the election so now she's like well now they're back to lying for each other so like what's going on there and i love it i think it's so full circle having spencer and pete having melissa and peter lie for each other about bethany and potentially has there been a repeat of that with cc i love it i think it's so full circle so melissa started getting threatening messages by a anonymous individual who claimed to have a copy of the video confession she once made spencer in regards to the truth about bethany peter hastings explains she was told to drop money off at a disclosed dis location or the video would be released he adds that's why melissa came back to rosewood in the first place as in secret dropped off the cash and hoped it go away nonetheless cc then turned up dead Spencer asks why she'd flee if she had nothing to do with the murder, causing Peter to say that she got spooked. Spencer asks why he didn't instruct Melissa to report the situation to the authorities, but he states that they feared the police wouldn't believe Melissa's story. And then it is revealed that it was Melissa's car who nearly ran over Emily, and in like the glove box of the car is a big envelope of cash so that the mechanic wouldn't say whose car this was are you joking are you joking no because i'm ca i'm connecting the dots here are you joking are you joking <laughs> in season seven once it gets revealed that mona killed cc melissa, melissa comes back and spencer and her kind of rekindled their sisterhood and then there's this really cool scene i know this doesn't really involve melissa directly but like i loved it so much but there's a scene where like a is watching like all of the friends and a turns around and it's melissa when i tell you my jaw dropped because i thought this was the reveal of melissa being ad and i was over the moon i was like oh my god yes like it came to something like it did something and at first i didn't really understand melissa being ad but then when i rewatch it and when i rethink about it and research it for these videos i'm like hold on i would have loved it but I remember at the point when it happened, by the way, it's not Melissa, it's actually Mona in a Melissa mask. Um, but when I thought this was Melissa getting revealed as AD, I loved the reveal itself. I thought it was so, so good. And I, I wouldn't have minded Melissa being AD, to be honest. And I was like, oh my God, her writing has finally come to something. And this is so good. I love it so, so, so much. But then 
it turns out it's not actually Melissa and it's Mona. That's it for the timeline, but that kind of comes to my point of like, what was the point of Melissa in that aspect? I think Melissa could have been the center of everything because she was involved in all of the big stories. Like I said, she was connected with Ian, Garrett, the NAT club, the Hastings family. She was involved in literally every main story. Bethany, the night Allison went missing, Allison herself, I feel like she had the opportunity to be the center of everything, but ultimately I think she was just used as the show's biggest red herring, to be honest. I think she was there predominantly, predominantly to build up Spencer's character and to kind of involve, evolve Spencer's character from the beginning to the end. Because like I said, her writing is really, really good and the tension really builds up surrounding Melissa and her character. But then once she goes to London, it's kind of like, oh, she's in London. Like we just kind of forgot about Melissa, to be honest. But I feel like the writing was so good and so set up for her to be involved in stuff that was just much more than Bethany's murder. Of course, I know it sounds crazy me being like, oh, it's just Bethany's murder. But I feel like the way the writing was going, she was set up to be so much more than that and i would have really loved for her to be cc's killer i think once she came back i think the writing was so set up for her to be cc's killer and i i love it i would have loved it to be honest i don't mind the show using her as a red herring like i said not every character can be a and can be the killer and whatever um so i don't mind her being a red herring i just found it very underwhelming and i think we just could have done a lot more with melissa because of everything that was kind of like against melissa evidence wise suspicion wise but also like the people that were scared of melissa so i find every time she needed to be rewritten out the show because the actress wasn't available or something i find it like oh she's in london card just really frustrating because i feel like we have so much to delve into regarding melissa i find her really interesting and complex character and the personality that she had, the mean personality she had, and the dark personality she had, I feel like we just could have involved her in a bit more with kind of A, or like I said, her being involved in Cece's murder would have been really good. But I think she was also there to build up the Hastings family. Obviously, the Hastings family holds such an importance in the show, and everything kind of starts with the Hastings family to be honest the Hastings and Dita and his family so I feel like she was also there to build up that family and to build up that storyline because a lot of it was her keeping secrets Peter keeping secrets Veronica keeping secrets Spencer keeping secrets and ultimately I think secrets killed the Hastings family really um so I think her being involved in that really helped to build the Hastings family and I actually really really liked that about her writing I I did enjoy Melissa's writing to be honest like I can't really fault it from the fact that the conclusion of her character I think was a bit underwhelming but the overall writing surrounding her character the overall suspicion towards her character the way she kept secrets I really really enjoyed that stuff surrounding Melissa and I don't really have a bad word to say about that and trust me I complain a lot of the time but I think it was just the point of she was so underwhelming I think when you look at Melissa you really get to understand why Spencer is the way she is the competitiveness the bitterness the selfishness always needing to be perfect I think without Melissa I don't think we're able to fully understand understand Spencer and understand that to an extent and I think she is so key for presenting that to us and I think like I said without her being that piece in the Hastings family we don't learn a lot about the Hastings family and the dynamic of the family which was ultimately the key thing for the show because I think then that has a bigger impact because without Melissa we don't know a lot about the Hastings family and therefore we don't know a lot about Jessica De Laurentiis, Alex Drake, Mary Drake, that whole relationship and the whole thing that kind of explodes afterwards I think without the help of Melissa helping to evolve the family and make us learn about the family, we don't know a lot about afterwards. Do you know what I mean? But I just feel like they did too much around Melissa for it to just kind of be nothing. I wrote a list here of kind of things that went against her that kind of set her up. 
So the first one, some of the texts when A was threatening Alison came from the old law office that Melissa worked at. Number two, Black Widow was stated early on to be endgame of the show. Marlene is very cryptic, but says that we'll see this character in 4B without their costume on and will be very important. And Melissa dramatically appears in this episode um, as if she had never left which was very interesting. When the black swan is introduced, Hannah draws attention to her being the same size as Melissa. A seems very intent on framing the lies for what happened that night. Whether they intended her to always be Bethany's killer, that gives her a motive to use the girls as a decoy or manipulate evidence pointing towards her. Melissa warns Ian if he sees Alison again that someone is going to get hurt and ultimately Alison got hurt. And so does Ian as well. So... She obviously was the queen of hearts. She was behind Arya being pushed off the train. A text of the liars claiming credit for it. And then obviously she was the queen of hearts. So she was behind Arya kind of being pushed off the train. Um, Melissa's wedding ring from season two was also called the queen of hearts. And when Mona is telling them about who is responsible on the Halloween train, she looks directly at Spencer and says your sister was involved. A conveniently hacks her laptop, then corrupts the video before Mona's statement can be confirmed. Garrett dies on the Halloween train. He told people about Melissa's pregnancy and how he knew early about the miscarriage, but also tells Spencer, Spencer, somebody you know very well has you completely fooled. People lie, but medical records don't. And then obviously he dies. So obviously we have so much surrounding her, maybe not to be A, but to be involved so much more than what she was involved in. Um, I'm not trying to like undermine Bethany's death or anything like that, but for it to just be Bethany's death, I think was quite underwhelming. But yeah, overall, I just think she's very underwhelming because as things kind of build up, as the tension builds up, as the clues build up, as her suspicion builds up, like she just gets written out of the show and it's like, bam, she's gone again. When I feel like the potential for Melissa was so good and like, oh my gosh, I would have loved it. Like if she had killed Cece, I think I would have been so content with Melissa's story overall through the show. Because especially like, sorry, but like the fact she's connected to every kind of main thing, Garrett, Ian, Melissa, Spencer, Hastings family, the Halloween train, the night that Alice went missing, Bethany, Cece. Like, I feel like it's too much for it all to just kind of be like a coincidence. Hello everybody. So my camera actually ended up dying and I'm very close to finishing the video. So I'm just going to finish on here. But yeah, my final conclusions is that I think Melissa should have been involved so much more in the story. Um, and just like way beyond just it being bethany because she had so much connection with like everything and everyone um but also i understand the point of her being a red herring that aspect as well and like not everyone can be guilty whatever but that's it for this video i would love to hear your opinion down below um how did you find melissa what was your kind of thoughts about her make sure to like and subscribe and i will see you guys in my next video bye guys Thank you.